Hello, my name is Jack Alaka, and this is my Chrono Relief Done Quick submission for the SpongeBob movie Any Percent as a potential solo run or as a race with my friend Jaxler. So, yeah, let's just get right into it. So, timing starts when I press no on autosaves. So, so, three, two, one, go. And we're off. So, basically, um, the SpongeBob movie Any Percent. What, what, what can I say? <laughs> so, uh, basically the main objective that we're gonna be doing for this uh, any percent run is we're gonna be getting 42 of the main collectibles in the game uh, to access the uh, final boss uh, which is Neptune uh, previously we thought that you needed 50 goofy goober tokens which um, is because of the Mindy text box that shows up in the driving level right before the final boss, um, which is like the drive of the knucklehead McSpazitron, that's the second to last level. Um, but the problem was is that there was a text box from Mindy that would stop you, stop your progress unless you had over 50 tokens. But because of new developments uh, in the community uh, over the past month, we've developed a uh, like consistent method of actually skipping the text box and disabling uh, Mindy in that level. So we now have basically cut nine tokens out of the run, um, which has drastically sped up any percent and has made it into like a really interesting route as there haven't really been too many changes to it um, over like the past three years since the last major like reroute. So yeah, just enjoy the ride. Uh, basically, I was just using no cheese to get all the general information about any percent out of the way. But um, this is like the first like very reset heavy skip, which is Creek Skip. Uh, it's a s precise. There we go. Yeah, it's a precise spin, jump, jump, spin off of the uh, platform right there. Uh, basically, in this game, uh, it's kind of different from other platformers in that you can actually walk off a platform a little bit and still get a double jump. So like right here, I'll just like kind of walk off the cookie a bit and I was still able to get a full jump. A lot of other platformers, you can't do anything like that, but we can on the uh, RenderWare engine, which we use, uh, or which movie and Battle for Bikini Bottom were made on. Um, and that allows for like extra possibilities as far as like platforming and stuff like that. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's all I gotta say about platforming. But uh, basically what we're going to be doing uh, in No Cheese and Depression is trying to get four uh, Goofy Goober tokens. That way we can access the first driving level. And there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of different checkpoints in the game to make sure that you're actually like exploring all the levels to some extent. Um, so like, for example, later in the run we'll get to Now um, that requires you to have 20 Goofy Goober tokens to get the uh, Sponge Bolt power up. Like right here um, is another checkpoint for Mindy where we get a power up. In this case, we get the cartwheel where you hold B and you can just like spin and go really fast. So that speeds up a lot of like the ground movement in the game. Um, and yeah, I'll see if I can get a one frame token. Alright, so basically there's um, a trick in the game called one frame tokens where if you pause on the frame that you collect, one of the Goofy Goober tokens, you actually enter the menu while collecting the token. That way you can actually warp away and skip the animation. Those are really like, at least for me, like I'm very bad at timing them, but they're really cool time saves because it's basically like six seconds that you get right off the bat. And that's depression. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, um, we basically just got the four tokens, and now we're going to go into the first driving level. There's a lot of these levels, um, like, like, basically spread out throughout the game. So, we got driving, and sliding, and boss fights, and platforming levels. Those are basically the four, like, categories of levels in the game, and this is the first one. So... Yeah, basically we're gonna collect these things called nitros, and these are just kind of speed boosts, basically like a mushroom in Mario Kart. Um, and we're just gonna, you know, focus on tight corners, and it's pretty self-explanatory driving level. Um, but yeah, I guess I can like, I guess like, if we were to do donations on the uh, Corona Relief Done Quick stream, I don't know if it's gonna be similar to 
uh, like SGDQ and AGDQ where uh, during downtime you can uh, talk about donations or like read, read donation messages. Um, but the driving levels are a great time to do that um, because there's not too much to talk about. It's basically just like I'm using nitros at very specific points uh, to get, oh, that's, that's the drift. That's the drift that I miss all the time. Um, but I'm using nitros at very specific points to try and um, like skip over like sand pits and stuff like that but yeah not too much to talk about here so i guess i just could just talk about like movie as a speed game like basically the spongebob movie is a very similar um like community to battle for bikini bottoms uh, both of them are made both of them are spongebob games developed by heavy iron studios on the renderware engine um, they look very similar, but because of their wildly different like level design, there's become a lot of like um, like arguments for which is the better game. I personally love both of them, and I actually run a category called Heavy Iron Any Percent, where you do it, it's on the multiple SpongeBob game leaderboards, where I basically do a run of Battle for Bikini Bottom Any Percent, uh, the SpongeBob Movie Any Percent, and Truth or Square Any Percent all back to back. It's a really cool run, especially because like Battle and Movie, they're they're pretty similar game mechanics. Like a lot of the uh, movement is very similar, like across both games. But Truth or Square is on a completely different engine, which um, um, you'll see in like the no level skip glitch submission that I um, put to the marathon and the jacks are put to the marathon. Um, but yeah, movie's kind of like the in between game. It's it's not as popular as Battle, but it's uh, it has more runners than Truth or Square, and I think it's a very I think it's a very interesting run, and especially with Mindy Skip. And just like the whole community trying to find different strats of the game recently, I think it's become like a very dedicated um, speedrunning community in the past like three years. It kind of went from nothing to like very tight knit group of people that are they just kind of love the game. And yeah, that's just what that's just what I love about speedrunning, especially like when you've been around for a while and you see the growth of the game. Like it's whack. But yeah, this is where we get the bash, uh, like right at the start of 3k, and this is a huge power up that we're going to be using a lot throughout the game. So I should talk about uh, bash boosting. So basically I'm just going to get some knockback off of uh, the spikes, I'm going to hold Y, and based off like the, the way it deals with like uh, button inputs, if I hold Y after getting knocked back, it basically buffers that Y input until the first frame after Spongebob's dam damage animation is over. And the result of that, as you can see, is I, I basically get the momentum from getting knocked back, and I still get the bash, like, vertical momentum, and that allows you to, like, make it over huge gaps. Um, and I should also say, like, basically, the, the reason the water is knocking me back in those angles is because uh, the game records your last uh, position on the ground, and... Um, it tries to put you in that direction, so that's why, like, right there, I do a very specific angle, uh, so that I can, like, actually jump on that, uh, wall, even though you usually can't stand on it, and, okay, I was going for a four-frame trick right there, it sounds really dumb, but it, it is actually four frames that it works on, um, where you bash into the button, and then you actually activate it, uh, and then... Um, open up the menu at the same time, similarly to like one frame tokens, but uh, I missed it. It's not a big deal. It just it switches up the route slightly, uh, and like when we do SpongeBob challenge. But yeah, in the levels, there's different challenges like SpongeBob or floating block challenges or combat arenas, but we don't really do those in any percent anymore. Um, but yeah, like some this is like basically the SpongeBob that you saw in Battle for Bikini Bottom. Um, in like the hub world, but there's like specific challenges. I think the mechanics work a lot better in movie um, for the SpongeBob. Like trying to like control it in battle can be pretty tedious, especially for something like Rollbuck. Uh, that tr that trick is very fun, um, but you'll see that in my any percent submission of the uh, game, so that'll be fun. Um, I'm gonna try one frame token. Got it. Yeah, you can see like. The token counter in the bottom right uh, went up by one, um, and I still opened up the menu, so now I can just use that to warp to Bungie Challenge and start this. 
the uh, amount of time that you save off of uh, one frame tokens actually varies a lot. So you'll have ones like Bungie Challenge where you don't actually need to warp anywhere, but if you get it, okay, I didn't get it. Uh, you can actually save like one second. Some of them can save about 10 seconds because they skip over an animation and like a mandatory uh, like cutscene afterward. Um, but it's like a lot of them are usually pretty worth it to at least try. But now we're gonna do Pat Steamed Early. So basically, oh, uh, I actually have to make I have to make sure I'm at full health. So I'm just gonna get this one. So there's a little piece of collision right here that just doesn't exist for the water, and that allows us to wa like jump underground. And if we just keep like jumping uh, rhythmically, we can just keep going under the level. Right now I'm gonna drop, jump on this rock, and then do a bash boost. Go over to this rock, bash boost off of here, go onto this one, and if I ledge, gra okay, ledge grab back in, and I can jump over to this one. And then this is actually a uh, challenge that you're supposed to do as Patrick, hence why it's called Patrick Gets Steamed. Um, but if you clip out of bounds and basically just hug the wall while doing bash boost, you can uh, get to it as SpongeBob and then just like basically warp back to the beginning. There's a lot of sequence breaks like that in the game, um, and it just kind of helps us speed along or like speed things along quite well. A big one you'll see is in uh, BBBH, but that's coming up after like the following uh, level after uh, the next one, but. Yeah, so this is the first floating block challenge. You can actually hold B during a cutscene to buffer a uh, cartwheel input. So that just saves like a little bit of time on the cycle. Um, but yeah, basically just like gets really hard at the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> I probably should have waited on the cycle. I was going a little bit too ambitious there. But yeah, just gonna hopefully not fall too far behind because I'm kind of used to a slightly faster cycle uh, where you don't ledge grab. So, actually, there's one block in particular that I might die on, but you know we'll see. Yeah, there's a lot of these like spinny ones, um, and it's kind of variable with, where, which way they're spinning. So, ooh, that was the one I was talking about, <laughs> but we got it. So. Now I just gotta jump on these. If you actually fall off of these ones and ledge grab on the uh, on one of these blocks, it's actually a one frame recovery. Like for some reason, when you try and uh, like grab the ledge, um, the thing like when it's disappearing, you just can't recover it unless you hit the frame after you grab the ledge. Um, it's really weird, or like a really weird mechanic in the game, but that's what it's like. Um, and now we're just going to do arena clip, uh, so we're going to do a bash boost right here, grab onto the ledge, and this skips over like that water area right over there. Um, yeah, bash boosting is actually pretty different from what you'll see in uh, battle. In this game we can just hold Y after getting damaged, but in battle um, it's counted differently, like the frames. So we have to, um, we basically have to like time Y on that input after the damage animation ends. So it is it is easier in a movie, but honestly, I it's kind of nice not having to do literally every single one frame. Just like with the sheer the sheer abundance of bash boosts that we do, it would be really difficult to like get an optimal run if all of them were one frames. And I already do like I already go for enough one frames in battle for my liking. So it's a nice change of pace to switch over to bash boosting, but. Yeah, this is like one of the first sliding levels, um, rub a dub. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. We just gotta hit the five targets um, to like knock over the like plankton towers. Um, but we're actually gonna do a, a skip right here that skips over the second target. I just gotta make sure I get this. Maybe. Nice. I didn't think that was gonna make it. Yeah, that's uh, that's dumb jump. It's a really precise setup uh, to like basically just fall off of the platform and redirect ourselves over to there. It saves about like 20 seconds, I, I believe. Uh, if you miss it, it's like 15 seconds lost. I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, we got it. And then there's just like one one more minor sequence break uh, past the bridge right here. We're just gonna 
basically redirect ourselves up to this top platform and this skips over like 15 seconds so like right there and yeah you can actually um, in this game the slide physics are kind of weird in that you can um, if you like input a jump the two frames before you actually land on the slide like before your landing animation you can actually um, like cancel your um, your sliding momentum and therefore you can actually like jump up the slide basically that's something we're gonna do um, like, like to great effect in a uh, bubble blown baby hunt which is the next level um, and like it, it, it's really not used too much in the actual sliding levels uh, except for in googly eyes and smelly knickknacks there's uh, what we call guest jumps for the for that slide uh, when like you're in the crown they're actually one frames instead of two frames um, so nobody really goes for them except for like really top level runners. Um, like even though I'm in like top seven, I just don't really see them as worth it because they're only like 15 seconds saved. So, so yeah. But we're gonna be doing uh, one like two frame jumps on the slide coming up right now. Um, so I'm just gonna cancel this cutscene. This is where we get the uh, smash. Uh, power up and that's gonna be helpful for taking out these enemies right here or actually it's gonna be more helpful for getting um, Frogfish which is the next like major boss fight But yeah, so we're just gonna get cartwheel upgrade smash then I'm gonna do two frames That was that was pretty solid. There was a lag spike there. Um, yeah, you kind of never know what you're gonna get. Um, oh, I actually upgraded the wrong thing. All right, that's that. That actually worked out fine. Um, yeah, I thought like basically basically you want to upgrade cartwheel there, but I upgraded smash instead. Uh, so that's gonna make it like a little bit more difficult here to get like all the enemies, but. Uh, we'll get enough manliness points right here to um, upgrade card wheel, so I'll just, I'll just do that right now. Yeah, and like basically, um, there's like this upgrade menu that uh, allows us to add a little bit more power to SpongeBob and Patrick's moves. We just use like the manliness points that we get uh, along the way to pay for those. So. Card wheel is a really good one to upgrade because you just get this huge aura around Patrick that just basically makes him invincible. Um, and then we're just gonna basically just hit these like buttons just to get across. That's fine. Yeah, I always like drop way too much like by the time I'm over here, and so I kind of miss. I usually miss the last one, but I miss the one in the middle. So I don't know. Yeah, and this is the first like actual like one frame jump that we're gonna be doing. Um, so I just gonna make sure I get this. Oh, that's actually really good. That's a that's a second try disco skip right there. So yeah, as I was saying like earlier with the uh, the bash boost, uh, with Patrick we don't have anything that we can really buffer. Um, like to get up, us up to that ledge except for jump and we can't really buffer a jump like we can for a bash so we basically just have to time it on that frame and I'm used to uh, doing Spongebob one frames in uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom there's a lot that you, you get to do with those in the game but the two timings are different so I am, I'm very bad at Patrick one frames but that was really solid yeah, and right there we just kind of used um, the downward momentum on the uh, like, like ice block to get some extra height there. That allows us to skip over most of the boiler room, um, which is a really good sequence break because that's a huge level that we're skipping out on, and it really like allows us to do BBBH forward uh, really quick. And because the um, oh there we go, <laughs> I almost went into combat arena. Um, because the area around the challenges is so big uh for like you to actually get the warp we literally just have to go into that room like a little bit to get the warp for spongeball challenge um i'd say this is probably like one of the more difficult ones if you're like not being careful 
um, because it's a very specific cycle that you're supposed to get on, and if you like go too fast or too slow, you're basically just gonna fall off because you have these red platforms coming up where after you activate them, they open up and you can fall through them. Uh, those are pretty annoying to deal with, especially right here. So I just gotta make sure I don't miss this. There we go, yeah. <laughs> if I went too fast there, I'd probably like bonk on uh, the last block which makes it like, you know, impossible to get that one. Um, I'm just gonna do like a little jump there, skip over the rest of that cycle. Oh, okay, <laughs> getting the token one frame, that's really good. Um, and then we can just warp back to the beginning because the, re the reason why we do those jumps at the beginning is because there's a actually a trigger on the slide that uh, tricks the game into thinking we had actually come down from there. And basically that's a slide that you come out of at the end of the, end of the level so if you can get up to that trigger where i, I kind of like stopped at that l like light post on the ceiling um it tricks the game into thinking you actually ended the level and so it uh activates the end level fight that you would normally do right there because you know i had to go on the slide and then the enemies appeared so that sequence breaks allows us to um like basically get that token later and we can use that um that token to warp us to no weenie parking and then this is the next uh like basically the next driving level in the run uh so the objective of this one is to get the five keys to open up the door that brings us to frogfish which is the next like mini they're like the next main boss in the run kind of like the separator between uh early game and mid game for like those who watch um uh, and yeah there's like a different objective in every single driving level like for this it's to get the five keys uh for sunday driving it's to like like make sure you're keeping up with uh, goofy goober um and then like i guess with sandwich driving it's just get to the end um and the same for like knucklehead but but knucklehead is pretty interesting considering we can now do mindy skip um but i'll explain that more during like sunday driving um i just gotta like I gotta keep you guys on your toes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a route change here for this lap. I'm gonna just get the key over here. Uh, I'll do the, the money strat, or some people call it the jackalaka money strat. Uh, there was a money strat in uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom that a lot of people used uh, as like an easier way of getting the shiny objects uh, atop uh, the Goo Lagoon like, castle. Um, I found like an easier way to get on the trampoline, so I just started calling it the the money strat, and then I was just like, it's a thing. And then like basically in the old uh, route that didn't have Mindy skip for any percent, everyone would always like be low on shinies going into SCDA, and I found that you could just get a ton from that like stack of TNT. Um, and so I was just like, yo, we should start getting this. And then I like people just started calling it the money strat. Uh, in here as well, so a little bit of like a like a cross game uh, meme in the community, but um, yeah, we're just gonna use nitros to just boost all the way over to here. Um, oh, okay, I was somehow in the uh, the range for that. The hitboxes for the nitros are really weird, but you know it, it's all good. We're basically just gonna do a little bit of backtracking uh, past this to do rub a dub and sandwich driving. This just allows us to get the final two, um, the, t the final two like necessary um, tokens that we need before going to frogfish. Cause then we're just gonna get the frogfish token and then the, the rock slide token. And that allows us to have 20 going into now that we're men so we can um, unlock sponge pool. But yeah. Yeah, basically like every single slide and driving level has uh, four challenges. It has the first one uh, where like, you know, you'll have to just get to the end of the level or, um, or yeah, like just find your way to the end of the level uh, or just do something like that. And then there's time challenge, uh, ring challenge, and then macho time challenge. So we're just doing the time challenge right now. The times aren't particularly like difficult to get, <laughs> so... Uh, it's not that big a deal. We're like, the like the macho time challenge and sandwich driving is like a little bit difficult, 
because um, like you know at least for like a new player because it's like three minutes you have to get and the best you can get is like a 230 on Xbox that's one weird thing like the inversion version differences between like uh, like battle or, or like like Battle for Bikini Bottom, the version differences are very sparse, except for load times. But in movie, there's like really weird ones, like, um, oh, <laughs> because um, we did a sequence break there, the uh, enemies don't actually load in, but their hitboxes are are still there, so we kind of get stuck on them. But as I was saying, um, there aren't really many version differences for uh, like Xbox, PS2, and GameCube for Battle for Bikini Bottom, but in the movie game, um, it's really weird. GameCube has like extremely fast, uh, like driving, like basically the Krabby Patty is just really fast on GameCube, and because of that, like individual level runs of sandwich driving are usually done on GameCube. Um, but you know, apart from that, there aren't like too many version differences, except for like mini skip not working and a few other things like. Because of frame rate differences, a um, slide two frame basically is like a four frame uh, at 60 FPS. Because you know you still have to have like the two frames uh, before you actually go on a slide. Oh, almost went to 3K. That was close. Oh, I forgot to split there. But yeah, uh, sandwich driving 101 time challenge. I actually um, it took me like three months of <laughs> trying to optimize past a 231 and then I just got a 230 out of nowhere and it was just like the most hype thing ever so I could try and go for a 230 um, but that requires like extremely good like angles I okay, it's looking good so far we don't know if it's a, like a 229 is possible on Xbox and we probably will never know until someone gets it um, or like times it to see how close we are uh, because there isn't an emulator for Xbox that like works for battle and movie So we don't really have any like save states or memory watch or anything like that because like modded consoles are like st like strictly banned off of um, Like movie and or the movie and battle leaderboards just because we've had a lot of cases where the load times are just way too quick um, on some Xboxes and it like has to be because of because of modding um, and yeah, that actually, um, that actually happened at, uh, <laughs> Summer Games Done Quick, it was pretty funny, uh, like, I got a modded Xbox that I rented from, like, World 9 Gaming, um, and I decided to do a 16% run of battle, which is basically just get to the first boss fight, RTA, <laughs> and, that, that, and that's it. Uh, I have record in that category, and it's, it's a very difficult... Uh, like string of tricks that you got to do and I just like was starting to nail them But like the the load times on it were just so fast That I was like on pace for like a 12 2x which was about like 10 seconds ahead of record And then I lost the run to slide skip, but it was still a sub 13 um, Like in the practice room that was like probably like one of my like f one of my favorite runs because I actually like got to do it in, in front of my friends, like in person. Which I, I think it's just like why I love Summer Games Done Quick this year so much. It was just like getting to meet everyone in person was so cool. And um, I really wanted like to submit to Summer Games Done Quick this year. I kind of forgot, but now that it's delayed, I'm gonna give it another shot and uh, get my submissions in this time because I kind of missed the deadline for that. Um, but I'm gonna make sure that I uh, get those in because I really want to see um, like battle movie or toss in the marathon. That would be like an honor to get to run those um, at such an event like that. But you know, that's all I gotta say for um, for sandwich driving 102. Yeah. So now we're bit <laughs> I tried. Uh, we're just gonna warp down to uh, no weenie parking and um, go into the uh, gate that we just opened because you actually um, you you have to get all five of them in one go for the um, game to actually open up the gate but once it's opened you can actually go to another level so if we do that and then come back it's open and then we get to use the warp to frogfish and not have to and we basically like save a load by doing that 
Um, so that saves like, I think, six seconds on the route, which is very, actually, probably more around like, um, like 12 seconds, I would say, which is very solid. But yeah, this is just frogfish. Pretty, pretty like not too hard boss fight. You just have to like lure him to one side of the arena, cartwheel into his tail, and then just go to the other side. And then phase two, like he uses the tongue that tries to give SpongeBob and Patrick the ice cream in the movie, and uh, sometimes that can like spawn out of the arena, which makes it impossible for you to actually like attack it without dying. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But we just ground pounded four times. Let's see where it lands. You can actually hit it before it pops out of the ground. Like its hitbox is there. Okay, cool. That was actually really good. Like its hitbox is there, but you, the character model isn't, so it looks like you're ground pounding on nothing. But, yeah. Now we got Rock Slide. This is like the next sliding level. This is probably my favorite sliding level in the run, uh, just because this level was always really long when I was uh, younger. Like it always just seemed to drag on for a while, but there's a lot of cool skips that you can do to speed it up. Yeah. Oh, that was close. <laughs> I probably should have went a little bit. Y you can like basically y like move the uh, shell during the cutscene. Um, or like during the fade in and that way you can just skip over that first uh, like corner but I missed it but it's fine so I'm just gonna like basically damage off of that monster right there and that just brings us down to this ledge that just saves like a little bit of time but there's like a lot of skips in rock slide that allow you to do stuff like that where you basically like do like a, a damage boost off of something or just like jump over to another part of the level that's something you'll see a lot in uh, Gesk, which is the uh, last sliding level in the run. But yeah, basically just gonna get like a ton of manliness points uh, from these boxes. We don't really, we honestly don't really need them uh, anymore because uh, like Bubble Blown Baby Hunt just has so many at your disposal. So um, there isn't really any like incentive to get all of the to or all of the um, uh, like manliness points anymore. But you know. I still go for them, but yeah, we're just gonna jump down here onto the trampoline. We're gonna fall off the course, uh, like past this blue lamp right here. That way we can avoid getting into the out of bounds uh, because uh, in this game and in battle, when you go out of bounds, uh, like if there's like an aura or like if there's like an out of bounds aura around that area that you're entering, you'll get taken out of the level by Hans and put back on the inbounds area. Uh, you can actually disable Hans in a uh, battle for Bikini Bottom, but you can't do it here. But the the good thing is that you know there's like a lot of areas that we can go to out of bounds that uh, you don't have to deal with Hans, um, which you'll see in like Plank. Uh, Plank is a good example. But yeah, I kind of got another hit that I probably shouldn't have, so I'm gonna have to play it a little bit more safe coming up. But it's not a big deal. As I said, like uh, shiny management isn't that big a deal so it's it's all good i can avoid some of the tnt also um like i may say shinies i i say shinies and mailingness points interchangeably because in a battle the currency is shiny objects and in this game it's mailingness points i always end up just calling them either or um just because i'm dumb <laughs> but yeah there's like one very difficult skip, or like kind of like all or nothing skip is, is a better way of saying it. Uh, if you miss this, it basically loses like 40 seconds because it warps you all the way back like behind where I was like a couple seconds ago. Um, so yeah, hopefully I get it. This is a pretty alright setup for it. Uh, I just, I still get kind of scared, especially in like a marathon run, um, but we'll see. And so I'm just gonna jump over here at that bush. I'm gonna hold left. Nice. All right. Yeah. So basically, there's like a very small window there where you can uh, like move off the stage, holding left, and just redirect yourself onto the uh, platform down here. And that way, you can um, like skip over a little bit of the uh, slide that you would have had to go down to get over here. And also because you did a bit of a sequence break, the uh, platforms don't actually spin around like they're supposed to. So that's like 
another side effect of it. Yeah, a lot of times in this game when you go like uh, with a sequence break, something just doesn't load uh, more often than not. So there's just some <laughs> funny side effects to that. Uh, but yeah, now we're just gonna be doing Nether Men. I'd say this and um, uh, SCDA, which are which is coming up. That's these are probably like the two hardest levels in the run. So these are like very heavy reset points, especially for being like pretty late into the run in the grand scheme of things. So, yeah, but right here we get the uh, sponge bowl power up and I'm just going to upgrade it immediately because or I, I upgraded it like immediately because upgraded sponge bowl is just OP in this game. Like you can basically detonate it like a bomb and attack all the enemies around you and it's just, it's very good. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm basically just going to do a little jump here to skip over this abyss gonna drop down a little bit and just do a jump jump spin back up um, that that's actually a pretty tight jump um, I prefer that version of doing it some people literally just like uh, walk a little bit more forward and then do a jump jump spin like just straight over to there I personally can't get that set up I'm very bad at it <laughs> but yeah we're just gonna do a little bit of platforming here to skip over most of like these platforms and then we're gonna go to another bungee challenge this one's like kind of unique from the other ones in that you can go under the target and still break it. And one side effect of that that's pretty similar to uh, Battle for Bikini Bottom is that if you uh, hit a target from below, you can actually get what we call an infinite dive glitch. So as long as you uh, are in a descent, you can press A um, and like, so basically, or as long as you're like going in an ascension right there you can activate a dive and that basically means that you don't ever have to go back up and activate and wait to activate a dive you can just do it willy-nilly <laughs> so yeah that speeds up that one specifically but that's the literally the only bungee challenge it works on for some reason but yeah we're just gonna ride this monster over to here a little bit of a pressure plate right here gonna hit it with a sponge bowl and then I'm gonna do another bash boost to like make it over this. And there we go. This is actually a very tight area right here because you got this. Oh, oh, that's a, like that's like a perfect cycle right there. That's really good. Um, yeah, we basically just run around that guy, and then we do six hits on this monster right here. Doesn't really put up a fight because we unloaded the enemies because <laughs> we jumped around the trigger, and yeah. Just opens that up and just walk to the end of the tunnel. Oh, man, okay, so this is the uh, this is what I call the gauntlet. Everything after this, because <laughs> like there's three skips coming up that are like they basically define now that we're men. Um, it's Chris skip, monster skip, floating block skip. So let's let's do it. So I'm gonna turn around during the cutscene or like during the fade in, and I'm gonna like basically do that to skip over much of this area this is actually a huge sequence break right here because uh, normally what you have to do is hit a ton of those like uh, sponge bowl cranks to be able to get like activate the trampolines and get all the way up to there but that saves a ton of time so yeah this is Chris skip right here double bash boost to get over to that token so here we go Ooh, I forgot to try or I like mistimed my a press so I'm gonna try that again There we go. Yeah. This trick was not found by Chris the Fast. We just call it that. <laughs> um, I think it, it was found by Cole, but we just started calling it Chris Skip as a, as a meme. Uh, but yeah, there's a monster skip right here. Ooh. Yeah, it's a very precise like trick because you have to get on the eye and it's really high up, but There we go, nice. Second try monster skip and second try Chris skip, I will take that. But this is definitely the hardest of the three. Probably the the most the most difficult trick in the game. Getting on that trampoline. No, it's floating block skip. So this is a Patrick one frame off of a very tight timing to hit a spike. Yeah, you, you'll you'll see here. If I get it.
It's fine. I'm just gonna turn up the volume. get really nervous here. Alright, that's fine. Wow, well, I'll actually still be ahead of my uh, PB. That's really good. <laughs> Alright, so that's floating block skip. That's a, a huge floating block challenge that you would normally have to do, but we get to skip over all of it, and if done perfectly, uh, that can actually save around a minute and a half. But uh, yeah, that's now there were men. Didn't get two damage uh, from that, still so barely ahead. <laughs> but now we got uh, now we got SCDA. I'd say it's probably like just as difficult of a level. Uh, it's just like. It's a little bit longer, so a lot of the tricks are very spread out. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I definitely don't feel comfortable doing uh, like toilet skip in a marathon run, so I'm just gonna not do that. I'm just gonna upgrade throw immediately, and then I can just hit that button. Um, and then I'll just turn around, activate this can right here. I'm gonna do a little bit of cutscene skip. There it is. <laughs> If you like walk on like the front of that platform, it acted. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, I have not seen that before. Oh, okay. Now I have to go for toilet skip. <laughs> yeah. If you if you walk on the front of that platform, it activates cutscene introducing the Merv enemy. But here we go. Oh, okay. Got toilet toilet skip. That's that's good. <laughs> That one's really stressful. You have to like basically cartwheel around it and then go in between two invisible walls to grab onto that ledge. It's very treacherous, but um, you know, it's all good. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> this, is, this is where the nerves really kick in, um, especially if you're like barely on PV pace. So now we got Circuit Doom Lace Skip. We're just gonna load in some enemies over there and use them for later. Uh, we're gonna just spin cartwheel off of the platform right there and get the token. And then we're gonna go back, get on the lasso, uh, or get on the ice block, and then I'm gonna damage boost off of this enemy. And if I jump and grab onto the ice block, it actually stores the momentum that I got outward. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have to do that again. <laughs> yeah, so. I get the momentum off of off of that guy, and then I can use that if I get enough height uh, from going like around the ice block to get up to this platform. So that actually skips over a little bit of gameplay because I get to go out of bounds to skip over everything past like Circuit du Malays. So yeah, now I'm just gonna get the warp for Sonic Wave Guitar. Go back, hit this guy. I'm just gonna use a melon to get over to the spun fall challenge. We're gonna get the warp and then use it for later. Uh, just because we can warp back and then warp over to 3 meter, which ends up being pretty fast with the route. Because um, normally we wouldn't be able to get back over there. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna get the warp for that. We'll go up here. Uh, 3 meter skip coming up. This is like BBBH times 2, like the slide jumps. Uh, we gotta go up a slide that's basically twice as long, so here we go. Yeah, I'm just gonna like cartwheel backwards at the beginning to grab a box so that we can grab onto the bottom of the slide. Just gotta make sure I'm grabbing the corner so I don't activate the exit trigger. I'm just gonna walk until the cursor disappears, and here we go. This this is a three meter skip.
Alright, that was that wasn't that good of a three meter, but still got up there. So now we're gonna use that sponge ball warp that we got. Go there, and then we're gonna warp back to three meters so that we go to the bottom of the slide. That just saves like like four seconds of a route rather than doing uh, like warping to sponge ball later. So yeah. I'd say this is probably like one of the harder sponge ball challenges because I go for a pretty difficult cycle right here. Uh, that all depends on like how I maneuver around this windmill coming up. So let's see how this goes. All right, made it over there. All depends on this blue yellow cycle at this point. All right. Yeah, I'm not gonna risk it. Blue. That was risky. <laughs> My heart just sank. Yeah, blue, red, yellow. I kind of I lost track at that point. All right, and that's us. The sponge ball. Now we're gonna work back to three meter. We'll be at the bottom of the slide, so that does save a good good amount of time. All right, yeah. And now, uh, <laughs> pretty similarly to uh, other levels, we're just gonna kind of brush up against the wall to get the trigger for uh, floating block. And then there we go. <laughs> pretty pretty easy. Now I'd say this is probably apart from like having to do floating blocks. So this is like easily the most difficult like platforming floating block in the game. Oh, I actually got ice physics glitch. Okay, so there's this phenomenon in the game called ice physics glitch, where uh, normally when you like walk on a ice platform, uh, it cuts your momentum when you like jump on it. But with ice physics glitch, uh, you can actually walk on it normally with with just like a little bit of sliding around. Um, we don't really know how to get it consistently, but it does help you get on faster cycles, um, like. It's just like, it doesn't really happen that often, so I was kind of surprised. Um, yeah, now I'm just going to go on this one. And from here, it's basically just like hugging the uh, the right side of the platforms to get on the best cycle. Uh, yeah, I just got to... I didn't think I was going to... I thought I was going to ledge grab there. Oh my god. I'm going to risk it. Yeah, the spikes in this game can really like hit you anywhere. So going for stuff like that is very risky. I could have just gone like I just could have just flung off, but I didn't really have many uh, places to go at that point. But you know, we chilling. <laughs> so after that, uh, after those shenanigans, we're just gonna like basically you know just, just clip behind this, grab onto that ledge. <laughs> That's always a, a fun trick to show people. They're always just like, wait, what? Because <laughs> normally you have to, like, similarly to earlier in the level, uh, you have to, like, throw a melon at one of the TVs and then the cathode ray uh, basically... Oh, never seen that before. Uh, it basically, like, hits the uh, area and allows you to progress. Ah, oh, that's fine. All right, I just got to see if I can get this. Uh, okay, so I just I, I, that's not a big deal. I just have to hit the button manually now. Yeah. All right, this is still on pretty good pace uh, for a no reset. It was just kind of like a sloppy now that we're men in SCDA. No big deal. All right, yeah. Just gonna throw the last melon, and we're there. Yeah. And now we got Dennis one. This is like probably like one of the hardest boss fights in the uh, the game especially if you're going for the fastest cycle which we just we just call fast Dennis so here we go let's go <laughs> that was a goal <laughs> Yeah, so that's fast Dennis right there. Uh, I was kind of, I'm kind of surprised I got that in a run, 
Um, yeah, basically, the, the whole trouble with that is the the game has like an auto target system for like if you're throwing a, a fruit uh, it'll like automatically target onto an enemy and what it, what you have to do there is you basically have to throw it in a very small window where it doesn't target on Dennis but the camera is facing uh, away from the platform so that you throw it at the platform um, and then like you basically stun Dennis in his animation and then he goes back over there it's a is a really like difficult series of events that usually doesn't happen, but it's not that big a deal to recover it. Uh, but yeah, this is basically Sunday driving. We're just gonna do this to uh, we're just basically gonna catch up with Goober or at least like just trail him because uh, in this level he will always be ahead of you unless you use like some nitros, and if you go ahead of him for too long, it actually. Um, Causes you to fail the challenge, so you always have to be like a little bit behind him. But we can uh, do like a few things to speed this up. So I'm just gonna do that one drift right there, just because like turning around in this game uh, is pretty slow. So for stuff like that, you can just like get a nitro to keep yourself at full speed after redirecting yourself, and just like a little cut through here. I use that to like get slightly ahead of him, and then. I just do like a little bit of a drift here, and then I get this nitro, and then I just like basically just let him get back ahead of me. It would be really nice if you could just like race him to the end, but uh, sadly, that's not how it turned out. <laughs> but yeah, we're just gonna keep getting the nitros. We're trying to get a lot for lap two and three to make sure that we stay ahead of Goober, because we're gonna end up. Uh, like disabling him in a in a little bit, so just gonna do like a little bit of a boost around there. In my last uh, submission attempt, I actually uh, I actually lost a challenge on this rock coming up, so I'm just gonna make sure I go further. It was that that one that I bonked off of. I got stuck on it, um, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> I've not seen that in like a year uh, where the like the ice cream cone it falls behind but yeah now now that we're on lap two we can go through this shortcut right here and uh basically just like keep ahead of um of goober for some reason if you just like do it on lap two and three it works but if you do if you try and get away from goober on lap one using that shortcut it actually causes you to fail the challenge so it's a very like slippery slope in this level uh, but yeah, as long as we just like maintain pretty solid speed throughout, uh, we'll like keep being ahead of him. If he catches up enough in like the start of lap three, uh, and you do the shortcut, he can actually like um, cause you to fail the challenge. There's a lot of stuff that can happen for you to just fail the challenge right there, but yeah. We're gonna go for... That's a little bit of a fence skip right there. That saves that saves like a little bit of time off the normal route. Probably like three seconds. It looks like it would be faster, but you you literally just come out there anyway if you go the opposite direction um, or like the intended direction. So I'm just gonna use my uh, nitro right here and then get the one right after this turn. Um, Nitro management, unlike in sandwich driving, isn't really used as often here. Uh, it's kind of more variable to like, like how you're driving. On sandwich driving, you can do like really tight corners, but um, in Sunday driving, it's kind of hard to like tell what to do there because you have stuff like the gumballs that just get in your way and stuff like that. But you know, still a pretty good Sunday driving right there, so I'm happy. There's a classic clip of me, uh, like going like basically just continuing past those like board boards there and I end up failing the challenge right at the end and having to redo a five minute level but that was pretty solid and now we have the uh, final sliding level in the game which is a uh, googly eyes and smelly knickknacks uh, by the way if you're trying to keep track of where we are in the actual Spongebob movie plot this is basically when they're in the fish tank uh, in Shell City um, for Sunday driving. This is when like they make their like grand escape. Um, so yeah, like at this point we're out of the uh, fish tank and Sunday driving the SpongeBob and Patrick are basically like dreaming about Goofy Goober. 
Uh, oh yeah, I'll probably turn the uh, the music down. I just gotta like get past this level. I usually like turn it up so that I can hear um, the audio cue for one frame jumps on uh, like the like floating block skip and stuff like that. But yeah, basically what we're gonna do right here is just hit three faucets, and that way that opens up the second half of the level. I'm just gonna get all three there, and then death warp, and I'm gonna mash A so that I skip over a cutscene that would play saying that you hit all three faucets. It's quite redundant, didn't really need to be in the game, <laughs> but it's all good, we can just skip over it. Um, yeah, now this path opens up and now we're gonna get onto the wires instead of the hoses. All right, there we go, I, I, was, I turned it from 13 to 11. Um, yeah, and the reason I took damage there was so that I can do a death warp, uh, like basically in the opposite direction, because if I had not died there, I would have gone uh, the other way to where I'm going now. So there's different routes that you can do to get the four targets up here, but I prefer yellow, orange, red, blue, uh, or yellow, orange, blue, red. You use like a little bit of the red in between the blue and you know, it's, but it's not really important. It's, it's just if you get it, but yeah, you know, just going to do a little bit of turn around here, jump off the wire. Oh, that that jump always gives me some anxiety. I always feel like I'm just gonna get momentum locked because the problem with uh, the slide levels in this game and similarly to uh, like Battle for Bikini Bottom when jumping off of a level uh, or jumping off of a slide um, Occasionally your momentum will lock in a certain direction uh, And you can't move out of that so that sometimes happens here and which, which is pretty detrimental to where you're like trying to go But I'm gonna do blue lamp skip here. Hopefully Nice. That saves uh, that saves a couple of seconds because normally you would have to go like all the way around and go up the lamps like normally, but we can just jump over to the blue one, so that does save a lot of time. But uh, yeah, let's googly eyes and smelly knickknacks. Now we got Dennis two after this. Um, he returns with a bigger boot. <laughs> yeah, it's bigger boot. <laughs> Shout out to the SpongeBob movie. It's classic. Yeah, but Dennis 2, I'd say, is probably, like, it's, like, once you get used to it, if you just get the cycle, then it's not too difficult. Basically, just gonna, like, shoot one at him here, he's gonna jump over to the other side, one, two, move out of the way, three, and then you just, if you just get two hits over here, uh, sometimes this enemy will spawn, and then you just hit one more time, and there we go. And now we don't actually, we actually want to warp back to Gesk because this level is very short, so be like doing time challenges is really fast for the route. So we're just gonna do, um, we're just gonna do a run through of time challenge. I kind of forgot to press B instead of A. So yeah, I could do guest jumps here, but I don't want to do one frame slide jumps. Those are, those kind of, those, those are kind of terrible. So we're just gonna basically do a kind of similar route to what we did in the regular challenge, uh, but we're just gonna go straight up to the faucet, um, still do a death warp, and then go up there. So, guess two, if you're not if you're not doing guess jumps, and guess two is a very easy level. Um, you just have to make sure you're not going too close to the edge. Um, you know, the crown is very fragile, and like, you know, if you're going for the one, I, I was <laughs> I was trying to reference as many Yes albums because I got the close to the edge reference right there. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna death warp again. It's very fast to do it there instead of like falling in the water. It actually saves like a second or two to do that. Yeah, then we can just go straight to the lamps. So now we're gonna actually go back. Uh, we're gonna do like a little bit of backtracking uh, to BBBH um, or Bubble Bull and Baby Hunt. Because uh, there's one challenge that we kind of uh, like cartwheeled past, which is a uh, throw the fruit electric. And the reason why we did that is because we didn't have th we didn't have throw at the time. Like there's a lot of challenges earlier on in the game that you can only do with power ups that you get later on. So uh, as far as like um, like what, what's a good example uh, in in depression, you know, the second level in the game. Um, there's actually a Sonic Wave guitar challenge that you can only do um, once you get the guitar, which uh, you don't get all the way until um, 
like playing topless, which we're gonna do after this. Um, so I'm just gonna grab onto the throw fruit, as they're called in this game, uh, and we're just gonna throw it at the button. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's weird, you can like cartwheel on that slide for some reason. Uh, I just gotta get this one. Yeah, I got. I should probably be more careful. Yeah, I'm actually just gonna do a little bit of a jump down here. That just saves a little bit of time. Yeah, I'm gonna throw it on this platform. Gotta just be careful here. The cycle looks pretty good, so I'm just gonna trust it. There we go. Yeah, because if you're holding uh, the throw fruit and you get electrocuted, then you uh, the the melon breaks. So, yeah, just gonna try and go for a token frame. Missed it. That's fine. I'm still golding. I gotta like go back through all my segments at this point. <laughs> so now we're going to Planktopolis. Finally, this is like the last level we're really gonna be going to. Um, it's basically like. We just have to do a little bit of cleanup before we get the 40 tokens, and then we're gonna do Mindy Skip. Um, but yeah, this is probably like one of my favorite levels, especially when uh, we didn't have Mindy Skip in the route, because this is like the last like true platforming level that we'd have to do. Um, yeah, right there we, since we don't have guitar yet, we have to uh, still somehow get over those spikes. And if you bash into a button and then jump, you can just grab onto that ledge. Yeah, I'm gonna go for a one cycle on the uh, bungee challenge, so I gotta get the infinite dive glitch. And then do one, two, three, four. This is really tight right here. Nice. <laughs> that was really good. I'd say, like, first cycle um, bungee in plank is pretty, pretty difficult. I have a lot of trouble with it. But uh, right here, we're going to clip back into the map because uh, we kind of went out of bounds right there. Um, and if you do, like, if you, like, fall down there, uh, it clips you back in. Because normally, there's, like, an invisible wall, invisible wall that you wouldn't be able to get on. But if you, like, go in between that invisible wall and the actual wall, uh, you can clip through. So, yeah, I'm going to throw the uh, freeze fruit and then grab the throw fruit. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going by the technical names um, and then just like we're gonna get the warp for sponge or for uh, combat arena and then I'm gonna get the uh, token for here All right, I was going for a, a token buffer but it didn't really work out yeah so I'm gonna use that warp that I just got to go to combat arena yeah this is probably like the hardest level in the run really hope I get it <laughs> there we go <laughs> yeah so, throughout the game, much like uh, Floating Block and Spongebob Challenge, it's just combat arenas where it's usually like three waves of a ton of enemies that you gotta deal with. But as a joke, um, in Plank, they just put one jellyfish in there, so it's a very easy token to get. But yeah, uh, for some reason, Patrick has like the grab radius to be able to grab on out of bounds here. So we can just clip out of there as Patrick, but you you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to do this as SpongeBob. We're basically just gonna like fall down here, and just go under the level. <laughs> that always looks like the dumbest trick ever, cause because the um, because you weren't intended to be out here. There's no skybox texture underneath, so uh, it looks like the game's just glitching out, trying to process what to put uh, like under the level. But yeah. Uh, basically we're just gonna warp back to um, we're gonna warp back to Mindy or we're, no, yeah we're gonna warp back to Mindy uh, so that now now since we have 40 tokens we can uh, unlock unlock a tar kind of blanked for a sec my bad <laughs> so now that we have like all the abilities in the game uh, we can just go to knucklehead and that's basically where we're gonna do Mindy skip and then go to the final boss fight um, so this is like, uh, coming up is like the only instance where we actually do lag clipping in the run. This is a, um, a trick that was found in a battle, uh, about a year ago, and it basically, like, if you lag the game and use the guitar, or in that game it's the cruise bubble, but if you use a guitar here, you can actually clip through, um, the ground. I'm not the most, like knowledgeable about how stuff like that works like a good person to ask would be like 420 plays it um or jaxler very like technical players of the game but um 
from my knowledge, you basically um, like lag the game and buffer a uh, like guitar input, and that just like gets rid of the collision detection and allows you to basically clip through the floor. Uh, but we're gonna do it here on a wall jump, uh, like on a wall jump surface. So uh, just gonna basically, I'm just gonna quickly upgrade Sonic Wave just so I can get that over with. <laughs> And then I'm just gonna do Plankton's Riddle. Very difficult. And <laughs> basically, if you were trying to do this uh, casually, just hit the uh, buttons with the green uh, manliness objects in front of them. I didn't even realize that was a thing, and I just kind of used trial and error. But right here, we're basically gonna use guitar uh, and like the momentum from uh, like the wall jump to just clip through here. And now we can just like. We're, right now we're in a state of guitar glide, basically, similar to sponge glide, um, and like if we fall and then clip th and then uh, like buffer a uh, like an R and A input, then we can clip back through. So that's the only instance of lag clipping, but it saves like 40 seconds, because normally we'd have to wait for like a very slow um, uh, wall jump to appear, but we don't have to do that anymore, so... <laughs> really fast. Now I'm going to go for a first cycle here. I don't know if this will work. Nice. I'm still golding. I, I have to like go over all these splits. Alright, now we're doing mini skip. I'm going to actually save my game before, uh, before doing this because last time I tried to record um, like a submission for this uh, I actually um, I actually crashed, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna overwrite my save file, and I'm gonna go back to no cheese. So here we go. So this is Mindy Skip right here. We're going to uh, detonate a sponge bowl in no cheese, and then and then we're gonna warp to SCDA sponge ball, and then immediately warp back to Knucklehead, <laughs> and. You'll notice that um, like we're kind of stuck in the um, the cutscene where Mindy's telling us that we need 50 tokens, but for some reason we can still use the the uh, the paddy wagon like during the cutscene. So if we just hold A and keep pressing B to cancel out the text box, we can use the nitro and stuff to basically uh, fall into the abyss. Uh, okay, one more. That should be good. Right, there we go. And if we don't press anything, then it basically activates every single challenge that's in the level. <laughs> so, literally, like the regular challenge, the um, the uh, time and macho challenge and ring challenge all appear at the same time. Overrides the text box, and we're able to just skip the fifty token requirement. So this this completely shook up any percent. It went from like attempting a 127 for world record like purple was going for a 127 now he has he's on the brink of a 107 like it it literally saved 20 minutes so i would say it, it kind of it kind of saved movie as a speed game it really like opened up for new routing possibilities as far as like getting to skip a lot of the redundant levels like sandwich driving macho challenge and ring challenge and stuff like that we don't have to do any of the guitar challenges because we can just immediately get guitar and just go on to knucklehead but yeah it's just like mindy skip has really like shaken up the game and i think it's in a extremely positive direction it's i don't like i don't know i think no mindy skip is still a really cool category but i think it's movies like finally become like one of it's become a top tier SpongeBob game as far as speedrunning goes, um, and I'm really happy with um, like the community reaction to it. Like I was originally kind of on the fence about it. I was like, yeah, but I I I really want to do no Mindy skip runs because I I was trying to go for a 129 uh, without doing guest jumps. That was like my my big like. My, my big goal for movie when I came back and then Mindy Skip was found and it just blew open the door for people to just improve their times by minutes and like tens of minutes um, but yeah that's really all I have to say about Mindy Skip just like 20 minute time save uh, it looks really dumb with the setup because 
really i'm i'm also not really like technical about that i from my understanding we're basically loading the um the like we i don't i don't know what the sponge ball is for but i know that like the sponge ball challenge in scda uh, by doing that it kind of loads the um it, it, it basically just like loads the um the you know <laughs> the what, what am i trying to say it loads the challenge and i assume somewhere in the code uh that causes the um there we go yeah and then the auto save comes in yeah but i don't know it works and we can skip mindy so now we're in the final boss fight. Yeah, so I'd say phase one is probably the hardest part because like Neptune's just throwing a ton of fire at us and we have to hit all five tables. Uh, that way um, when he shoots like the beam of light at us, it'll reflect and uh, off, off of all the tables and uh, hit Neptune back with recoil. You can actually see uh, on Neptune, there's like a little like like hemisphere uh that's actually the uh the leftover from the detonated sponge ball um that we did in no cheese it's stored in the the game and you just you just see it in the fight yeah so it actually appears on like the origin of all the levels that you enter after doing that so it's just like a, a funny side effect um all right yeah so that's first cycle for phase one that was actually really good. And then phase two, he's going to send out a ton of lasers. So I'm actually going to go down here first. And then that way uh, I can jump over this, get that uh, table. And then I can just like easily access these ones um, without like, you know, getting hit and stuff like that. Um, so I'm just going to, you know, go over here. And now I don't have to deal with the lasers. And he only shoots out two of them. So... There's just like a little bit of downtime for you to just like run over to the crabs or like the frozen Mr. Krabs. So yeah. Yeah, also it is worth noting that uh, we wouldn't actually be able to fight uh, like Neptune if we didn't have Sonic Wave Guitar, uh, which is, or like there's Sonic Wave and then there's upgraded Sonic Wave. That's the one that we need to be able to like fight Neptune or else um, it just doesn't do any damage, <laughs> so that's like one of the upgrades like we absolutely need in late game, because um, you don't really need it for the uh, guitar challenges. It's like it doesn't really affect much apart from just being able to lock onto targets and do cruise control. But yeah, phase three of the final fight. Here we go. Yeah, I'm just gonna do the same thing. Gonna run down here, and then I'm gonna do like a weird jump to the side just to avoid jumping on that a lot of runners will actually like kill the spitters over here but i i like the method of not doing that uh because i always end up hitting the, the lasers anyway so i i just like to just focus on the lasers and the way that i like move around in the level i don't have to worry about the spitters at all it's like i just stand there to like bait out their hit and then i just go right here There we go. And then one more hit. Uh, timer ends when uh, the health bar is depleted on the last hit. So I will uh, I will signal time. Yeah, this was a really good run. I'm really happy with how this went. Like it, it was a shaky now that we're in SCDA. But apart from that, like there really wasn't that much wrong with the run. Uh, like BBBH jumps were good. I was I was pretty worried about those. Uh, early game was just solid in general, so I'm really happy with that. Yeah, but final time coming up. Ooh, this is looking like a mid 140 or 114. Nice, that's actually a really good run. Uh, 114 30. So yeah, that's my submission for movie. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to my uh, current personal best, uh, the leaderboards. Uh, the world record for the game, um, and yeah, uh, I it would be an honor to get to run this at the marathon. So hopefully you enjoyed the run, and yeah, if I, if I don't make it in, good luck with the event, and I I hope uh, we raise money for Corona relief. 
It's a good cause. And yeah, that's all I gotta say. Thanks for watching.